Welcome to Leading and Loving Life, the go-to podcast for women seeking God's wisdom and transformation. I'm a called wire, and I'm here to guide you. Facing life's challenges, this is your place for inspiration, laughter, and God's love. We're all about empowering you through a strong bond with Jesus. Discover God's word with us. Let it guide, uplift, and remind you of your worth. We're here for every woman eager to grow in His grace. We will dive into genuine stories, celebrate triumphs, and get faith-based insights for daily life. Leading and Loving Life isn't just a podcast, it's a sisterhood. Here, we lead with purpose, love deeply, and laugh amidst challenges. Now join us and become a part of our purpose-driven community. Well, hello, friends. Today is day 28 of the 100 Days of Believing Bigger devotional journal by Marshawn Evans Daniels. And we are still under the big topic of identity. And today's title of the devotional is You Are a Leader. So I want you to say that with me right now. I am a leader. The scripture for today comes from John 15, 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. John 15, 16. Let's go right into the devotional part. As women, we have an up and down roller coaster like relationship with the word leadership. On one hand, we're supposed to be submissive and supportive. We learn much about surrender, but less about stepping up. We want to expand the kingdom, but we don't want to step out of place. We want to be a good wife, a pleasing daughter, and a wonderful mother but we're afraid to admit that our hearts crave something more, and therein lies a holy tension. God desires that we absorb the wisdom of others, but also that we never place the perspective of others and the protocol of the world above His voice and plan. The ancient truth is that leadership is your birthright. It's in your DNA. God is not a respecter of persons. See Acts 10, 34. That means He doesn't intend for just some of us to hit, of his daughters to lead. He's designed you for a specific pers- purpose, mission, and assignment. It's not about notoriety, status, titles, or how many people know your name. Leadership is about understanding how God has uniquely wired you to make his name known. Supernatural leadership happens when you use your gifts voice, and presence to be a representation of God's love, goodness, limitless creativity, hope, and freedom. You have been personally and strategically handcrafted by the Most High God to lead others into His presence, possibility, and eternity. Don't be scared to shift, ashamed to bear fruit, bear abundant fruit, nor shy about asking God for provision. There is nothing holy about hiding. You were born to lead, built to move others forward, and chosen to rise up for such a time as this. The question for today, where are you feeling led to lead next? Now, as you think about this question, you've got to go to a place of quiet with the Lord because we want to lead where God has for us to lead. We don't want to step out of our bounds. We don't want to go before him too quickly. We want to remain faithful where we're at, exactly where we're at. And God will reward us for that. So we've got to remember that um, we want to hear God's voice above anybody else's voice to lead and where he's led us to go. Um, We don't want someone else's perspective to keep us from leading the way God intended us to lead Leading doesn't mean we have the microphone. Leading doesn't mean that we lead um, in the area of it uh, in a business of, or being the CEO. Leading doesn't mean that we are the loudest voice. Leading means that we lead our children to the Lord. Our first ministry is always our home. And so I just take ask you to take a minute to sit there and think of that perspective. How are you leading your family to know who God is? Are you a husband leading your family to church? Are you a wife leading your children in prayer at night? 
Husbands can do the same thing. Husbands can lead their family and their kids in prayer at night. Are you leading by example, by studying the scriptures for yourself? Or are you expecting your husband or your wife to sit and read the scriptures, but you are not? Um, or you expect your children to read the scriptures, but you are not. So we lead by example. Everywhere we go, someone is watching us. Um, friends are watching us. Families are watching us. Neighbors may be watching us. Um, coworkers could be watching us. So how do we lead? How do we lead with our mouths? Are we falling into the ways of the world and talking out of both sides of our mouth? We have doubt and unbelief coming out. Um we have foul language coming out of our mouth. Are we leading others that way to go down that path of, well, she says she's a follower of Jesus, but then here she is over here cussing like a sailor. Um, or she's a follower of Jesus, but then I see how she or he um, acts or around certain people. So just remember that, that being a leader um, is much more than being the one in charge. Going back to the devotional part, I wanted to look at what I underlined as I was studying this about a leader, about being a leader. But leadership is about understanding how God has uniquely wired you to make his name known. We are given the gift of leadership, not to exalt men, to, but to glorify God. And that's what we want to do. That's what leadership is, is how are we making God's name known to other people? So we want to ask God to reveal to us and to equip us for the place he has for us today. Ask God, show me, Lord, where you see me as a leader. How am I a leader? And he will show you. And then he will anchor you in the anointing of leadership. Okay. Here's a part I... at um. I highlighted in my notes, there's nothing holy about hiding. And I've done that before. I've hid before. I've hid in the kids ministry before at church because, um, yes, my husband is a pastor and 100% I have leadership skills built inside of me. And let me tell you, I think my husband is an incredible leader. I learn from him all the time. And I'm always like, tell me more. Like, I always think, my goodness, how do you have the words to say? Because my words don't ever come out that um, eloquently or put together. And so that's just the difference that he and I have. You know, he has more leadership skills and moments um, of work, you know, opportunities that he's had in the past. But you know what? That doesn't make me any less of a leader than him. I just have different skills and abilities, but I need him and he needs me. But I'll tell you, it took a minute for me to recognize that and even to acknowledge that in myself because I knew, yes, I am graced and anointed to be the children's pastor here at this church. And I have a gift and a calling to work with kids. 100% I knew that. However, we now have an amazing children's pastor who has taken my place. She is the children's pastor now, and I've had to step out of her way so that she can flourish and grow and thrive. And the children's ministry at our church can just really expand and really blossom under her leadership. And guess what? I learned from her every single day. I, I learn from her. I like how she sees things. I think she is so much wisdom that she has brought to our kids and to families. And I'm just so thankful. But what I was doing in that transition time for me of stepping out of children's ministry and into a different position, leadership role, I was hiding in the back with the kids. And it's not because I didn't want to see people, but that's where my comfort zone is. And it was, but I've had to learn to trust God and step out of that and say, okay, Lord, you've got something new for me. I want to walk and be obedient in what you're asking me to do today. You have equipped me to continue to lead. You have grace and anointed me to lead where I am today and in the position I have now, just like he did when I stepped into the position of children's pastor so I have to re remind myself of that and just walk confidently 
and know that God has that same plan. And that's what he has for you. There is nothing holy about hiding. So wherever you're hiding, whatever, er, excuse me, whatever area you're hiding in, God wants you to step out. It doesn't have to be loud and boisterous and you don't have to draw the attention. No, that's not what we're talking about. But step into the calling that he has for you. Say, God, show me what you have for me because it's time for me. It's that Esther moment. We were born for such a time as this. God had us in this moment in 2024, in this moment to rise up and to lead our children to love God, to pray for our spouses, to believe him like never before and walk confidently in the areas that he has called us to lead in. And that is just so, that should just really build your faith and stir your faith up because man, God has something so incredible for you. And it really isn't incredible to watch when I see people from church that are, that take hold of this and understand, oh my gosh, Lord, you've got something for me and I don't know all the picture and I don't know everything that's happening, but I'm going to take that next step of obedience and then that next step of obedience. And I'm going to remain faithful where I am am at because if when we're faithful in the least he will give us more he will see okay you're faithful in praying for your spouse you're faithful in praying for your kids and leading them to to me and you want my name to be known oh you're faithful in showing up to work on time you're faithful in being truthful with your words you're faithful in being kind and understanding to those around you you're faithful and honest in everything that you do and that you say, um, you are faithful and obedient and God sees that and he will, he'll give you more when he sees that you can hear and you can listen to what he is saying to you. And that's how I believe that my husband and I came to where we are today. We are leaders because we had to just take that next step of obedience. It didn't come all at once because things that I have prayed about for years are just now coming to fruition and it's incredible to watch and see, but I had to be faithful where I was with what God gave me at that time. And I had to honor God with my words, with my life and with the ministry that he gave us, with the jobs that we had, we had to be faithful where we were before he would lead us to more. And so I just want you to know that um, also God wants desires that we absorb wisdom from others, but that we should never place the perspective of others and the protocol of the world above his voice. I know that can happen as well, because sometimes we're like, Lord, is this your voice or is this my voice or is this my mom's voice or my dad's voice or my sister's voice or my neighbor's or my friend? Whose voice is this that I'm hearing? But it is so important that we know what the scriptures say. It's so important that we understand and know that we know that we know that this is God speaking to us. And we don't put the world standards on our lives. We put the word standard on our life. And the only way we can do that is if we are spending time with the Lord every single day. So open those Bibles up, read what the scriptures have to say know what they have to say, speak them out loud over yourself every single day and take it from the head knowledge to the heart knowledge and watch God work. Believe his word, draw a line in the sand and believe what he says about you and that it's truth. We can't walk in the world and the word. Yes, we live in the world. We live here, okay? But that doesn't mean we are of the world. We are Christians. We are believers and we are to live differently and we are to make God's name known. Matthew 20, 28 even tells us, even the son of man came not to be served, but to serve. And so that's our leadership example. That's what we need to follow after is how Jesus led. We are serving people to give God the glory. And we are here to make his name known. That's what we want to do. So I encourage you today, no matter where you're at, remember that you are graced and anointed to be the mom. You are graced and anointed to be the dad, the wife, the husband, the leader, wherever you're at, God has graced and anointed you for this moment. And trust him. Talk to him every day. Talk to God every day. He will lead you 
on the steps and on the path that you need, but you've got to trust what he has for you. Let him prune you. Let him shape you. Let him continue to mold you each and every day. Learn the scripture so when any lie pops up, you can go, "Uh uh-uh, devil, that's not from the Lord. That's not God's voice speaking to me. That's yours. And I take that thought captive and I cast it into the sea because it's a lie and I'm not going to listen to it because God says, I am a leader. God says, I was born for such a time as this. God says that I, that he chose me and appointed me that I should go and bear fruit and that my fruit should remain that whatever I ask the father in his name, he would give me. That's what his scripture says for me today. And so that's where you take the scriptures and you personalize them for yourself. Renew your mind every single day to the washing of the word of God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, you have been gracious with your attention and intention for me. Anchor me in the anointing of leadership. Reveal my assignment and equip me to serve passionately and proficiently. Father God, I thank you so much for the amazing people that are spending time with me every day, just listening to this podcast and growing in your word. We're growing together, God, and we want to be leaders for you. We want to do what you would have us do. Show us, Lord, where we are leaders. If maybe we aren't in a leadership position yet, but you have something for us. And maybe it's not what we're thinking. Maybe you've got something different for us. But you know what, God? We trust you. And we love you and we want to do what you want us to do. We want to walk with you. We want to obey you every single day. And so, Father, I just thank you that you are always with us. You've never left us. You will never forsake us. And we can trust you with our entire lives. Thank you, God, for anchoring us in the anointing of leadership. Thank you for showing us what it means to be a leader, that we are not here to be served, but we are to serve other people. We are to make your name known. And that's what we want to do. That's what we want to focus on, God. God, we love you so much. I am so thankful for every single person listening to the sound of my voice right now. I pray that this devotional is just really opening their heart and their mind to see and to know and discover who you are to them and that their life is so much more than maybe they think it is right now. But God, they have something to offer every single person in this world, and they have something to offer their family. They have something to offer in their churches. They have something to offer in their workplaces. And God, they are beautiful. They are made in your image. We are made in your image, Lord. And I pray that we would never forget that. Thank you for being patient with us, for loving us, for leading and guiding us, Lord. We love you. We bless you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm thrilled that you've chosen to join me. Each week, it is my hope that you are encouraged through what you hear and know that you belong here and you are loved. So I have a little favor to ask. If you find value and joy in what you hear today, I encourage you to share this podcast with your friends and family. Spread the word about leading and loving life with Jesus so that together we can create a community of love, faith, and growth. Thank you once again for joining me today. May this podcast be a beacon of light and hope in your life, guiding you towards a deeper connection with Jesus and a greater sense of purpose. Until next time, be blessed, be inspired, and keep leading and loving life with Jesus.